Just because you're slapping together a bunch of expensive PC parts, it doesn't mean you're actually building a good high-end system. And as a technician, I actually get a lot of high-end PCs fail if I'm not building them. That's because people spend money in the wrong places. Now, I've made a lot of videos about this topic specifically, and every time I do a PC build, I try to put a lot of emphasis on where to spend your money. However, still, in 2025, we have people picking the wrong power supply. Now, I attribute part of this fault to NVIDIA because their high-end GPUs draw a lot more power than their lower-end ones, and if you do not undervolt them, they will have very high peak wattage power consumptions. So I do understand why this can happen. However, it keeps happening, and the difference in price for a good PSU is very slim. So today I'm actually recommending a few good power supplies too, so that you can avoid your PC breaking. What I have right here is a high-end PC, which this time I actually built for a guy, and he had some overcurrent issue and he broke his power supply. So we are replacing it with this guy right here, which at the moment I think is the best buy in terms of high-end PSUs. When I saw the Amazon price, I couldn't quite believe it. So this one is the LC Power LC1200 P2 V3.1, and it is a 1200 watt 80 plus platinum PSU, which costs just 170 bucks on Amazon. And if you buy it on other websites, you're gonna pay 150 bucks. Now, the only problem with this unit specifically is I find it is very well priced only in Europe. So if you're from Europe, this is probably the best PSU you can buy. If you're from outside in the world, you probably have to buy something else, but I'm gonna give you some recommendations still. So covering this one specifically, what we're looking for is an ATX 3.1 platform because we do not want to use extension cables. Now, extension cables conversion from 12 volt high power to 8 pin, they are plenty fine, don't get me wrong. However, they are very fragile. So if you do bend them, if you do connect them wrong, you can get issues, even now that they have fixed the cards themselves. First of all, there are still cards from the first batch out there, which you can misplug your connector in. But even the newer one, I find the 12 volt power cable is pretty tricky to really hold it in stable if you have an extension and if you're mounting the GPU vertically or maybe with not too much headroom from the GPU to the actual side panel. So getting a native ATX 3.1 PSU is key if you're buying an NVIDIA high-end GPU. It's not the case with AMD. You can go with a non-ATX 3.1 PSU, no problem, but this certification also helps ensuring the PSU is up to newer standards. So new PSUs are actually a lot more tested than older PSUs. That doesn't mean that older PSUs are bad because there are some from certain brands like EVGA comes to my mind, which are gonna just be eternal pretty much. They're so good, but there are also a lot of bad PSUs from previous models, whereas the newest one, they are more tested. Doesn't mean they're perfect, but they are more tested. Now, 80 plus certification. We're also starting to have another certification called Cybernetics, which is getting popular, but what we care about is the 80 plus because it's very popular. You want to get at least a gold. Gold is the new minimum for high-end builds. It's not just a matter of efficiency. It's a matter also of quality of the PSU. So a PSU, which is not even 80 plus gold, is gonna have worse components inside, which is gonna in turn give you lower efficiency. I think if you're going for a 4090 or a 5090, you want a 1200 watt 80 plus platinum PSU. The reason why you want that number specifically is because ideally your PC is operating at around 60% of your actual wattage most of the time. Then peaks, they can exceed it, it's okay. But you want to stay around there. Now it doesn't mean we have to spend double on our power supply just to run it at half the speed. But what it does mean is that if we have a high wattage drawing PC, we don't wanna go too tight on our PSU. Now this one from LC Power specifically, flat cables, fully modular. It is a heavy unit, very heavy to hold it in hands, and it has a very good platform. How can you see how good of a PSU you have? Here's a little trick which nobody really tells you. So I can see it in the undervolting potential and overclocking potential of my hardware. So a good PSU makes a massive difference in how much you can get your voltages down to because it's gonna have lower ripple, more clean voltage and me testing a lot of components and especially if I test a PC with a different PSU and then I put a better one in, I can immediately see the difference. Sometimes it's even more important than your motherboard because motherboards generally have less of a filter than the PSU themselves, even though they still have VRMs and it still does matter a lot. But if you change from an 80 plus bronze to an 80 plus platinum PSU on the same build, you can generally get 
just a little bit of extra voltage down or a little bit more stability, which is what, as an undervolter, as an overclock that I'm after. So that's an extra bonus. But the main reason you should do it is to preserve your PC, because if you have a very good PSU, slightly oversized, you're also going to be able to be more protected against current issues. I've had a good friend of mine recently break a 600 watts 80 plus platinum PSU with a 5090. And the only reason his PC didn't explode is because the PSU, the shot, and the PSU basically got so broken, he had capacitors going around inside the PSU, but it still saved his over 5,000 euros PC. So good PSU is always worth it. And I just felt like making another video to remind it to you guys was important. And also a few tips if you're shopping again. You want to buy something from a reputable brand, you want to buy it 80 plus certified, and you want to buy it high enough in wattage. You also don't want to pay too little. If it is too much, under market price, you're probably getting scammed. There's a lot of that going on with PSUs, and PSUs are one of the few things which still I wouldn't really buy no-name brands from AliExpress at the moment, even though I gladly buy motherboards and other things. So with that said, the video is over, but if you guys have any experience with PSUs and you have a very good one to recommend, which is cheap, drop a comment down below. If you try this one from LC Power, also drop a comment down below, and see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.